Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our webinar training. My name is Tamara. I'm your host today for this uh, session here about the Bella Vista with the subject Getting Started. So our trainer or speaker today is Anthony Curley. And before we start, please um, let me give you a short introduction to our WebEx application. Uh, for some reason, I was just disconnected with the audio. I'm sorry for this inconvenience. Okay, once again, I would like to show you some WebEx tools that we need here um, during this training. And uh, first, I would like to ask you, please um, open the participants menu and open the chat menu. Both you find on top of the screen in the middle in the drop-down menu. There, please click on participants and please click on chat. So uh, the participants window on the bottom there, you see a raised hand. And when you click on this raised hand, you see it now behind my name. For us, this is the signal that you have a question. So in case you have a question, please don't hesitate. Use this icon with the raised hand, click on it. We are going to stop with the presentation. Anthony will um, answer your question and then we will continue with our class here. When your question got answered, then please unmark that sign. Lower your hand by clicking on the same icon a second time. So it's gone, please. Right next to that raised hand icon, you see a green check mark, and that means the answer yes, and a red X, that means answer no. But just in case our trainer Anthony is asking you something that you can answer with a yes or no, just use the both signs here, green check mark and red X, please. For your information, I'm going to record this webinar, and the recording will be available for you to download from our Vision Training Center webinar archive in a couple of days. At the end of this class, when Anthony is finished, I also have a survey for you um, where I would like to have your feedback to this training here. So please stay online. Do not log out when the class is over. It would be very nice if you could answer us uh, some questions in the survey, please. Leave your feedback. And, uh, yeah, we see then what can we maybe um, what can we maybe do better in a class or so. This all you can let us know at the end of the training, please. Great. Thank you very much. So um, before we start, can you please let me know if you are ready? When we can start with the training, just click on the green check mark, please. That looks good. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm so sorry, this was the second time now that uh, the application threw me out here with the audio. Please excuse. I actually just wanted to say, we can start with the training now, please, Anthony. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. We certainly have a very uh, geographically diverse uh, group on the line today. Um, uh, people from as far afield as uh, Asia-Pacific, Asia all across uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa and India. So yes, it's uh, great. Thank you for taking time out of your day to, to join us. So today's webinar is the, the pilot one in a series um, of uh, ongoing webinar uh, trainings that we've put together so that customers that are maybe new to our devices or maybe have had the devices for a while and they want to do a little more with them um, so that we can aid you with that. So uh, today we're going to uh, go over uh, the external connections and interfaces with the device, the start screen, the breathing circuits that you can connect to the uh, Bella Vista, the cockpit um, display, uh, the resources that you have available to you, and then we'll have some Q&A. Um, so on Wednesday, you have a session available to you that um, goes through the Bella Vista modalities. Thursday, there is um, a session configuring Bella Vista, um, including how to create profiles, 
and then there's a, a whole raft of uh, training courses that are uh, that are coming online and will be available on Vision um, in the. In the, in the next few days, um, about target events, about using the neonatal software, taking a deeper look into the biphasic uh, APRV concepts, uh, AVM, um, there'll be an introduction and some ventilation strategies uh, gone over, lung protection option with esophageal pressure monitoring. We're going to have one on our lung recruitment tool, which allows you to assess recruitability and also features in the lung protective strategies uh, portfolio. We're going to give an introduction to capnography and the waveforms, and then build that up to volumetric capnography with the Bella Vista. We're also going to go uh, through waveform analysis, and we're uh, looking to work with uh, uh, an international uh, uh, clinical speaker to go over uh, COVID-19 in terms of pathogenesis and treatment options. So, we're going to start off today with the connections and interfaces with the, with the, the Bella Vista. So, if you have the device to the left-hand side, then you have the ports here, so you have your Bella Vista uh, bus port, which is primarily for your service engineers. There's the nurse call uh, control. Behind this little cover here, there are, there are space for two USB ports so that you can um, potentially control your aerogen uh, from there, or you can uh, export and import data into the device. There's an ethernet control there for connectivity. We offer the Bella Vista with an array of uh, gas inlets, so that might be DIS, NIST, AFNOR, for instance. Um, whilst the Bella Vista uh, 1000 and 1000 e have a four and three hour internal battery um, when fresh out of the box, uh, there is also an option to connect to an external uh, battery uh, via this port here. Behind this little trap door here, which is magnetized uh, to hold it in place, we have an ambient air filter, and this can also be replaced with a HEPA filter. And we'll touch on that in a little while. Over on the right-hand side, up here, you have uh, your CO2 monitoring port and you have your SPO2 uh, monitoring port. Whilst the Bella Vista uh, already has the SPO2 and CO2 software already built in, simply plugging in the hot swappable uh, respective cable activates the alarms and monitored parameters. If you are new to the Bella Vista, you'll notice on the left and the right hand side, there's a little button here, one on each side, and that's your info button. Pressing that pops up a display on the screen and outlines to you what the uh, respective controls do um, on, on the left and the right hand side. You also have your uh, nebulizer port, so if you wanted to use a pneumatic nebulizer, uh, you can do so, and that would be uh, slow and volume compensated. The green port is your auxiliary pressure port, uh, where you can also connect to your esophageal pressure monitoring. Your flow sensor uh, would, would connect up to here, and the inspiratory uh, gas would come out here. Uh, behind this little trap door is the uh, CO2 cell. The Bellavista 1000E comes with the integrated exhalation valve as standard. Uh, for the 1000, you can have the integrated exhalation valve um, added as an option, or you can also um, add the dual limb adapter, which allows the use of dual limb breathing circuits with the Bella Vista 1000. Anthony, one moment, please. Yes. Um, there seems to be a box on the right side, a window. Can you move that to the side on your screen? That's it? Yes. A, bit, a little bit more, please, because it's... <laughs> It's great out here and, and in our presentation. Okay, much better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah. Okay, super. So on the right on the left hand side rather, where you saw the ambient air filter before, um, this can be replaced with a HEPA filter. So there's a kit here um, that um, customers can go for and that includes the, the housing. Um, to hold the HEPA filter. Going forward, the filters that are replaced um, uh, every three months um, are included in this, in this pack here. So the, the filter protects the patient air inlets of the Bella Vista against contamination from 
outside. And it simply snapped on. Um, HEPA filters remove at least 99.97 .97 of airborne particles, measuring uh, down to 0.3 micrometers in diameter. Uh, you'll see here we have a H14. So there are different classifications of the HEPA filter. And the one that we use is the, the, the H14. So um, along the, the array, that just outlines that we filter down to 99.995% of uh, uh, airborne particles measuring down to 0.3 micrometers. To install the HEPA filter mounting, simply insert it um, back to front here Click it in on the right-hand side and then turn it back towards the ventilator and simply snap it in and then that will hold in place for you. And um, to remove the filter, it's just do that in the reverse order. The filter, the HEPA filter itself, so this is the housing I was referring to and this is the uh, filter cartridge that is changed every three months. This filter mat here, um, which is in contact with the ambient air, is changed monthly. So every three months, every month. We get some questions about uh, what options do we have in terms of exhalation valves, and some customers want single patient use and some customers want reusable ones. So we're going to just go through both of those options here. So as I mentioned before, the Bella Vista 1000E um, is incorporated with the integrated exhalation valve, which is here, and that might be familiar to some of you. Um, going forward, so that, this, so that the, the, the exhalation valve cassette can be reprocessed, uh, cleaned and sterilized between patients, then sometimes people may well need to keep one of these on the side um, as a replacement so that you can turn around the device um, quickly between each patient. If the customer wishes uh, to use a single patient use exhalation valve, then we have this option here on the right hand side. Um, but then you would just need to plug it into this here. So this part would plug into the ventilator and then you would simply connect a single patient use exhalation valve into here onto the right hand side. The Bella Vista 1000E um, it does not include the integrated exhalation valve as standard, but it is an option. Um, so you have uh, two options with the Bella Vista 1000 for the external exhalation valve. There is the single patient use one that I mentioned before. Um, and in order to use this, um, the clinician or the customers would um, uh, add this, this component here, which is a dual limb adapter for the Bella Vista 1000. Anthony, there would be a question, please. Oh, yes? Hello. And uh, Nayan Kumar, you are unmuted. You can ask your question, please. This is to Nayan Kumar. Hi. Hello. I had to turn my... Uh speaker volume down so I could speak. Uh, Hello. So, is on autoclaving the integrated exhalation valve. Um, when the vent is gone in, do we autoclave this part? Yes. Um, you're, you're a few slides ahead of me, and I'm going to touch on the, I'm going to show you where the cleaning instructions can be found. Um, we've actually put that, made that available on the website for you so that that's available to everybody. So I'm going to come to that in a moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So the integrated exhalation valve here, I've embedded a little video here. So the exhalation valve cassette um, has been qualified using two different hygienic preparation methods, manual disinfection plus automated cleaning and sterilization uh, there. And as I mentioned uh, to Nan a moment ago, that there is a dedicated guide outlining these processes. Uh, we validated uh, the exhalation valve cassette for uh, 30 sterilization cycles. 
So some customers may get more than that, but we've, we've validated it for 30 um, with the, as long as the guidelines are followed that we've, that we've published. Um, we do advise uh, to conduct hygiene preparation of the integrated exhalation valve cassettes prior to each use. Disassemble the exhalation valve cassette prior to each uh, cleaning and sterilization. And then once you've received it back from the CSSD department uh, following sterilization, um, check that the ex exhalation valve cassette um, is, is connecting nicely and carry out a circuit test um, as described in the, as in the operator manual. So what I'll do here. So here you'll see the disassembly. For instance, when preparing to send the parts to sterilization, you'll notice that the two opposing white lines have to be aligned to enable disassembly. I'm just taking up the membrane there. So you see there's four components. So now you can see reassembly of the integrated exhalation valve. Reseating of the membrane properly is crucial for, for proper operation. Again, alignment of the two white lines is required for reassembly. Anthony, one moment, please. A question that I received in the chat from Saeed. Um, how many sterilization cycles are recommended for exhalation valves, the reusable ones? Uh, so, as I, just, as I was just saying then, um, we have validated the uh, system for 30 uh, re uh, cycles. Thank you. So now we're just going to change gear and go through the start screen and the breathing circuits. So while up to 20 profiles can be stored with the Bella Vista, and you'll see here that there's an option to configure profiles, you can have 20 profiles stored in the memory. Um, the configuration and selection of the profiles will be addressed in the webinar later this week by, by my colleague. Here. So once we're starting up, so you'll note here that once the gender and the patient's height is entered, the patient's ideal body weight is automatically calculated for you. You'll see on page 134 of the operator manual how mod modification of those uh, pathology-dependent settings modifies the defaults, such as your IE ratio, your PEEP, et cetera. Here, we're just going through the setup of the automatic tube compensation. So the humidification selection option here is only available to our US colleagues at present. So this option here of active humidification or the HME filter. And there you go, and you've started. Okay. So you have, a, you have a wide array of circuits available to you. So page 29 of the operator manual provides details of the various breathing circuits available uh, with the Bella Vista and those applications. Um, we've summarized here in this table for you um, the different circuit types and their respective indications broken down into non-invasive and invasive applications um, as appropriate. So the A-type circuit is for non-invasive ventilation only. You can't choose uh, an A-circuit with any of the invasive modes. Uh, it's a one-tube circuit with proximal pressure measurements and expiratory flows calculated. Um, if you're going to do non-invasive ventilation, a vented mask with leak and safety valve is required. Okay, so you have to use a vented mask.
Breathing circuit C is not to be used for life sustaining ventilation owing to the absence of expiratory volume monitoring. Uh, a C type circuit would only be used with spontaneously breathing patients, such as long term tracked patients or those patients um, having non invasive ventilation. Uh, while proximal pressure measurements can be obtained, there's no expiratory volume monitoring or life sustaining, uh, life -sustaining ventilation available. Uh, for non-invasive ventilation, a non-vented mask is to be used. So here, just to highlight, it's a non-vented mask. The D-type circuit um, uh, is that, again is a one-tube circuit with both proximal pressure measurement and expiratory flow calculations um, available for you. Um, you'll see here that the Bella Vista flow sensor is required with this type of circuit, and non-invasive ventilation with the DTAP circuit requires a non-vented mask. The most commonly available circuit, or most commonly used circuit, is the E-type circuit. Uh, that may be a dual limb, or it might be a coaxial, like here. Again, you see the Bella Vista flow sensor plugged into here. Um, the dual limb option supports neonatal, pediatric, and adult patients requiring invasive or non-invasive ventilation. For non-invasive ventilation, a non-vented mask is required. And just to reiterate, here again, you're using a Bella Vista flow sensor plugged into the patient here, plugged into the circuit there, rather. For high-flow oxygen therapy, um, whilst, uh, whilst our catalogue lists a, a dedicated single limb high flow oxygen therapy circuit, it's important to remember that the patient can also be extubated and the inspiratory limb from their dual limb circuit uh, can be disconnected at the patient Y with the high flow interface simply plugged in. So the high flow interface here could simply plug into this port here thereby allowing simple escalation and de-escalation of respiratory, respiratory support. So we're going to just go through the cockpit now and adjusting those parameters. Anthony, one moment, please. Marie-Louise is having a question. How long can you leave the flow sensor in use? So we have validated it for um, seven days of use. So seven days, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's what we validated it for. Okay, so just embedded a video in here just to walk through the ventilation settings in the cockpit. So they can be directly accessed via the cockpit and you just touch, adjust and apply. So here we're changing parameters and you just simply touch the tile until the context menu opens and select the parameter from the parameter table. So spontaneous breaths or trigger attempts are, dis are um, displayed as filled curves while mandatory breaths are empty or unfilled curves. So as you can see here, this is a filled in curve. So that would be a spontaneous breath and this empty or unfilled curve here would be a machine breath. So parameter tiles can be exchanged in terms of volume and size. Uh, just simply touch the parameter tile uh, you want to change, hold until the context menu opens, and select remove or change parameters, remove or change those parameters. When you've removed a tile, you can use the empty tile for configuring new tiles. So here you can see that two small tiles can be changed into one medium tile, and two medium tiles can be changed into one large tile. So the control buttons on the lower bar can be changed for direct access to extended monitoring, trending, and other features. The curve elements can be changed in terms of number and type, and we can have up to eight curves uh, elements displayed at any one time. So here, 
you can simply uh, freeze and assess your waveform by opening that little flyout menu here, and then you can move the bars along to see the um, measured uh, component. If you want to take a screenshot, you simply press that camera button here. And you can adjust the sweep speed here by zooming in or zooming out. So to stop ventilation, simply touch stop ventilation button and confirm. And then it goes back to the start screen. Alternatively, ventilation can be stopped by the ventilation menu. So you have two options available to you there. So in terms of resources, there's a couple of websites here that um, I'm just going to show you now. So this is our resource and training center. And to, to help you learn and to use the product, we've pulled together all the operator manuals, the training resources, and other tools that we have, and sorted them by product. So we're talking about Bella Vista today. Just open that there, click view more, So the instructions for use and operator manual, the HEPA filter manual is, is outlined here, the exhalation valve uh, manual. So for instance, we had a question before about the exhalation valve and how to clean it. So this document is here and it walks you through um, in terms of the products that have been validated, the uh, sterilization cycles, temperatures, uh, dwell times, it's all outlined here step by step for you. We've also created a dedicated COVID-19 page. Whilst it houses um, the similar materials um, that I've just shown you on, on the other page, We've also added um, our uh, updated cleaning guidelines um, in alignment with the CDC recommendations, so that they can be found in here. Um, filters, other people are using a lot more filters now, um, so that um, obviously to protect uh, patients and protect the staff in the department. If you have any questions that are related to COVID-19, we have a dedicated um, uh, team that are monitoring this group mailbox here. So you can send emails to this email address here and then the, the team will get back to you directly. Also for the courses that I mentioned earlier, the vision uh, websites that you probably used to register uh, for today, you'll see that as those courses are booked in, they, they will be uh, made available for you to make a reservation on there. We've also collaborated with the Ventilator Training Alliance Group. And what we've done um, is we've put a whole raft of our resources um, onto, onto the app. So it's available for iOS users, uh, for Android users, and also a, a, in a desktop format as well. Um, what we're aiming to do here is bring all the ventilator companies together around one source. Uh, for caregiver training, um, regardless of the brand. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of new and unfamiliar vent ventilator models appearing in the care settings, and the shortage of clinicians um, resulting in new users, quick access to information um, was found to be a pain point. So the app includes essentially a single source for training content. There's no cost or registration required. Uh, there's built-in transcribing translation uh, option and offline use. So the, the clinicians can save this material uh, for easy access um, if they have no uh, Wi-Fi or, or mobile coverage. Um, so all the, the, the brands that are, in, that are listed in there are collaborating to share content such as user manuals, basic operation and troubleshooting tips and tools uh, for, for their ventilators that we have in the market. Uh, the, nobody has any direct financial gain um, at stake here. It's truly an altruistic effort uh, all round on behalf of 
a, a number of manufacturers. The languages that are included there are French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Korean, Japanese, plus uh, both simplified and traditional Chinese. So simply by installing the app, so just by searching for Ventilator Training Alliance, you'll see the icon here and just install it on your phone. Alternatively, use the desktop version. Click on here. And you see that there are an array of brands. And then the products that we have posted information about. So, for instance, we've been talking about the Bella Vista today. You can just click on there and then download and save materials um, on, on your um, phone. So, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Um, alternatively, you can um, email them over to your, your local contact or you can send me an email. Dear participants, if you have a question, then just click on that raised hand icon. There is one question I received through the chat from uh, Nilesh. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Catheter mount and HME filter is required for E-lamp type checking. Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry. The, can you repeat the question, please? Catheter mount and HME filter is required for E-lamp type check. Um, so what um, I think I understand what you're what you're what you're after. Um, you don't necessarily put the HME in when you're doing your circuit check, but on the website that we showed before, there is a dedicated uh, video. Um, let me just show you that talks just solely about um, the circuit test. Just bear with me. So there's a whole raft of training videos that we've created and they've been, they're housed on here. So you will find here, so the Bella Vista uh, circuit test, we've got a dedicated video there for you. So you might want to just consult that if you have any questions about setting up the circuit. Okay. Good, thank any you Any more very questions much. tomorrow? I did not receive in the chat window, just one moment, there's a raised hand. That is from Jan, please, yes. Jan, you are unmuted. Would you like to ask yes, a question, uh, please? Can can the Bella Vista be connected to the local hospital information system? Uh, yes, it can, yes. We use a vendor-neutral HL7 protocol, so we pitch out all our data. We would just need to check if a bridge was required between us sending the data and the hospital information system catching and processing the data. So, yes, we can. Thank you. Then I would like to continue with a question in the chat, and this is from Harpalins. How frequently the uh, flow sensor needs calibration, he would like to know. Flow sensor calibration guideline. So the guideline that we have is that it's simply done prior to starting ventilation on the patient. Um, in order to ensure that the flow sensor continues working well, especially in a humidified environment, we'd advise that you keep the uh, ports for the flow sensor in the upright position because, of course, water goes from high to low. But you just need to check it before you put the patient on. Good. All right. The next question that is coming from Valid, please. Does all type of PT circuits are available from by air or third party? So the circuits themselves, um, that they are, they're not 
uh, vendor specific to us. Um, they're not proprietary circuits. Uh, you can buy them on the open market. Um, just um, refer to uh, page 29 in the operator manual um, of how to actually connect those circuits in. But no, it's not a proprietary circuit, no. It's not, okay, good. The next question, is the uh, HEPA filter standard or optional with every Bella Vista 1000? It is optional. It's optional, okay, good. So to that HEPA filter again, um, is it useful in preventing cross-contamination of COVID-19? So manufacturers don't, still, don't specify which viruses are um, have been validated for. Um, what we can say is that the, and of course the, the, the final say will be the local infection control team for the hospital as to whether you use it or not and if it meets your requirements. However, um, the HEPA filter can filter down to 0.3, uh, particles down to the size of 0.3 micrometers and the uh, filter is um, I was having a look at some guidelines uh, last night, and that's HEPA, the, the, the degree of filtration that we offer is deemed satisfactory for acute care uh, settings for isolated patients. But you'll find that HEPA filter manufacturers don't cite which viruses have been uh, tested. So they'll just talk about in terms of particle size. Good, thank you. Next one from Saeed. How long does the uh, HEPA filter to be used, and is it recommended near patient or near exhalation valve? So let me just show you the picture that we used. Okay. So the HEPA filter clicks onto the left-hand side of the ventilator. Okay, so you're protecting the device from contaminants in the ambient air. So the HEPA filter fits onto the side here. If you wish to add different filters on, uh, on the patient's circuit, for instance, then of course that would be a clinical decision and you would assess that locally. But the HEPA filter that we sell to protect the device and the patient goes onto the side of the device. Next question is from Joanne, please. If the flow sensor is only validated for seven days, would a new sensor then have to be calibrated whilst on the same patient? For example, one patient on the vent for two weeks. So it would be a local decision as to how, you, how the hospital proceeds. Um, different hospitals have different protocols for changing their circuits. Uh, some places, if they're using their circuit uh, for 10, 10 days, for instance, or, or, or something longer than a week, will assess it on a case-by-case -case basis, and they, they may well continue to use it um, beyond seven days. We're not advocating that. All we can say is what we have validated the flow sensor for, and that's for um, uh, seven days of use. Good. Thank you very much. Dear participants, anything else you would like to know from Anthony about our Bella Vista devices? No, I don't see another question here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you too, Anthony, for this nice um, Bella Vista presentation. So, dear participants, just one moment, please. I'm going to open the survey on the right side now where you find a couple of questions. Please leave your feedback about this training here, and we would be happy to welcome you again in our next class that uh, on the Bella Vista again. It takes place on Wednesday, the 29th, this week, Wednesday, the overview of Bella Vista ventilation modes, and then a next training on uh, Thursday, the 30th, the configuration of the Bella Vista. Thank you all very much for your attention. Take good care, stay healthy, please, and have a nice day. Goodbye.